Oh, you must have been grandma's favorite. That's it. How'd you know? <laughs> Find out what values changed or stayed the same next time on Antiques Roadshow. Tonight at 7 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... English Rose Tea Room in Carefree, serving afternoon tea and traditional British fare in a Victorian tea room atmosphere. Open for lunch and afternoon tea seven days a week. Information at 480-488-4812-carefreetea.com. AARP in Phoenix thinks today should be your day. So get active and help keep Phoenix in motion or get involved in improving your community. Take on today and every day. Learn how at aarp.org slash phoenix. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Programs on Arizona PBS are funded in part by a gift from the estate of Elaine Innes. For more information on how to include Arizona PBS in your estate plans, call 602-496-8888. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. On the next Arizona Horizon, a new study on racial disparity in police shootings. And not all are pleased with the state's attempts to take over parts of the federal Clean Water Act. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... I'm David Goldstein, owner of Biltmore Loan and Jewelry. We buy or loan on upscale assets. We have over 30 years of experience in determining values of automobiles, jewelry, art, collectibles, and antiques. For more information and appointments, BiltmoreLoan.com. Gray Gloss and images of the earthly experience have been renewing and transforming interior spaces for 50 years. Artwork designed to energize your visual space can be viewed at Gray Gloss and Galleries in Sedona or online at GregLawson.com. When you cast your vote in the upcoming election, you connect with issues that hit close to home. Clean Elections provides voter resources and tools so you can vote informed on August 28th. Connect with the facts at azcleanelections.gov. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. The extreme heat isn't the only thing that bites. We take a look at what diseases are flying into the valley thanks to monsoon weather. How one local artist is inspiring young people to spread their wings and be heard before tonight's voter registration deadline. Companies around the country are pledging to stop the use of plastic straws, but these two women are taking it a step further by practicing a zero waste lifestyle. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Amanda Mason. And I'm Emily Wirtz. Thank you for joining us. Over the next few weeks, get ready for more monsoon rain and a multitude of mosquitoes. The calendar turns to August on Wednesday, which is typically Arizona's wettest month. As the rain falls, mosquitoes multiply. The Department of Health monitors and traps mosquitoes each summer. Maricopa County has a schedule of planned fogging operations to kill the insects. The more precautions taken, the less chance of West Nile virus spreading across the state. The West Nile virus came to Arizona in 2003. According to the Department of Health Services, the virus is primarily carried by the C.U.L.E.X. mosquito. Only one in five people will actually show the flu-like symptoms. Mosquitoes become infected with the virus after coming in contact with infected birds. Every month during the summer, the state collects over 300 samples of mosquitoes to test for the West Nile virus. Dead birds and horses are tested for the disease. This testing allows public health officials to identify communities at higher risk for mosquito-borne diseases. So far this year, there have been 24 mosquito samples that tested positive for West Nile virus here in Maricopa County. And there's already been one confirmed case of West Nile virus this year, according to the Arizona Department of Health Services. Jordan Daphnis reports on how you can help prevent the spread. During monsoon season, there is an increase in mosquitoes due to the amount of standing water. I met with the Department of Health Services to learn how you can protect your home and your family. 
Mosquitoes may be tiny creatures, but they can be a huge annoyance. And the Arizona Department of Public Health says during the summer, they can also be a huge problem. With monsoon, we see an increase in rain in the valley and around the state of Arizona. Moisture brings mosquitoes, and mosquitoes can bring diseases. There's several mosquito-borne diseases that we watch for here at the Arizona Department of Health Services. Certainly West Nile virus is the most common, but we also see diseases like St. Louis encephalitis, which is a mosquito-borne disease. And then there's another kind of mosquito that also lays eggs and breeds in that standing or pooled water. And those mosquitoes can spread diseases like Zika, Dengue, or Chikungunya if those are present in our communities. Even with Arizona's extreme heat and dry conditions, after a monsoon storm, stagnant water can be found anywhere, even in containers like this one. And this water becomes a breeding ground for insects who carry diseases, like mosquitoes. It's really important after a rainstorm comes through that you clean up your yard. You wanna, if you've got a bird bath outside, kinda dump the water out of there. If you've got pails or kids' toys or dog bowls that are just stagnating, you wanna dump the water out, wipe out around the inside. Anything as you look around your yard that's just a source of standing water that's not moving and isn't chlorinated like your pool is, you wanna get rid of that water so you don't encourage mosquito breeding. The department recommends that when you do go outdoors, you wear long sleeves. They know that may not be the most comfortable, so they say you can wear insect repellent instead. In Phoenix, Jordan Daphnis, Cronkite News. Government funding is set to run out 37 days before November's midterm elections. The president is threatening to shut down the government if Congress can't support a border wall and tough immigration policies. President Trump tweeted this weekend, quote, I will be willing to shut down government if the Democrats do not give us the votes for border security, which includes the wall. We must get rid of lottery, catch and release, etc., and finally go to a system of immigration based on merit. We need great people coming into our country. Border security and immigration remain hot topics leading into election season. Tonight at midnight is the deadline to register to vote in Arizona's primary election. Allison Snell explains how art is being used to help get people registered. I went to Roosevelt Rose Art District in downtown Phoenix today, where I talked to a local artist and the Clean Election Commission about how they created animated wings that virtually take flight. Anyone can walk up to the mural, open the Shazam app, scan the QR code, and when the camera is faced towards the wings, they come to life. At the bottom, a big button says register to vote. You can click on it and it pops up with three easy steps to get registered. We have our newest voters who are turning 18, so we wanted to leverage that and connect with them and say, you know what, we know this demographic. We know they love street art, and we know that their participation rates are a little bit lower, so let's bring the two together. Let's go down directly to their community, and let's bring this beautiful piece of art and give them the opportunity to come down with their friends and have that Instagrammable moment, but also turn it into something where they can participate. It may seem like an out-of-the-ordinary place to register to vote, but along the busy road, the wall full of murals stands out. We have to come to them. You know, we can't expect them to come to us. The entire campaign for this is 18 in 2018 so this is really about young people getting out and exercising their right to vote and about spreading their wings and, and taking flight. These wings might look like something ordinary but if you pull out your smartphone and scan the QR code they go from this to this. All of this work to create something unique that might inspire a reason to vote. Warren Lee had to paint five different layers of the wings to create the special effect. You can find another augmented reality wing, wing mural in Tucson. The voter registration deadline is today at midnight. In the broadcast center, Allison Snell, Cronkite News. The primary election is just four weeks from tomorrow, and if you haven't started researching candidates, you might want to begin now. But what you'll see and find on those candidate websites will vary widely, as Pat Pabletti and our Washington Bureau tells us. Education, immigration, gun control, these issues have all been in the headlines recently and will likely be topics in the upcoming election. But not every candidate is talking about every issue in their campaign materials. And one expert told me that that may be just fine with some voters. If you want to know where Democratic candidate Deidre Abood stands on the issues, all you have to do is go to her website, 
where you'll find an extensive policy platform. Transparency is how we know who our candidates are, what they stand for, and why they stand for them so we can make an informed decision. Kelly Ward, a Republican running for the same seat as Abood, lays out her positions in a series of videos on her website. But if you look to Congresswoman Martha McSally's website, the Republican Senate hopeful doesn't provide an online policy platform. Political scientist Peter Loge says the lack of information is by design. The thorough policy statements can be useful for those of us who like to dig in, who are really torn, especially in a primary, right, where the party affiliation doesn't play as big a role. But for a lot of us, for most of us, most of the time, it comes down to, you know what, this person feels right. Democratic Congresswoman Kirsten Sinema and GOP hopeful Joe Arpaio are slightly better, listing issues with broad policy objectives. But more telling than the answers are the issues themselves that the candidates choose to highlight. You look at, is this person like me? Does this person reflect my values? Does this person talk in a way that makes sense to me? Do they sound like they're trying to snow me? Or do, I, do they sound like they're being honest? We make, we make our, our personal judgments based on that. Abood said she would have agreed with Loge before the 2016 election, but thinks that voters are now placing a larger emphasis on where candidates stand. Will you still have some people who are just going to vote DNR? Yeah. But after being on the campaign trail for 16 months and meeting people all over Arizona, what I hear from people in all political parties, including independents who aren't a political party, they actually do want to know where people stand. Despite those 16 months on the campaign trail, Abood is still seen as an underdog in her race against Cinema, And polls show that McSally is the Republican with the best chance against Cinema in the general election. In Washington, Pat Pobletti, Cronkite News. Attorney General Jeff Sessions made an announcement this morning that the Department of Justice is creating a religious liberty task force. The task force will help the department fully implement our religious liberty guidance by ensuring that all Justice Department components, and we've got a lot of components around the country, are upholding that guidance in the cases they bring and defend, the arguments they make in court, the policies and regulations they adopt, and how we conduct our operation. Session says the task force will protect religious freedom. The human rights campaign responded with concern that it could lead to discrimination. Coming up on Cronkite News, you'll no longer have to wait in line at a kiosk. The light rail is going paperless. Next, how Valley Metro is adapting to the technology wave. Plus how two women are trying to make a change in the environment by practicing a zero waste lifestyle. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS PBS, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. The 2018 election season has arrived. Join us for primary and general election debates. Right here, meet the candidates and hear their positions. Arizona Horizon your source for what matters most this election season. Only on Arizona PBS. Here at Cronkite News, we have producers who craft shows that make an impact on our community. Our broadcasts allow students to be involved in all levels of production, from producing to directing. We are guided by highly respected professionals who mentor the journalists of tomorrow. From technical directing to teleprompting and beyond, our production crew works tirelessly to produce meaningful and award-winning shows. We are Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. You may have experienced this. You're trying to catch the light rail, but before you can buy your ticket at the kiosk, the train has come and gone. But now, as Kevin Fleischman reports, there's a pilot program to make hopping on easier. That's right, Amanda. The app is being tested right now, but it will allow riders to use it to buy light rail or bus passes. 
James Franchino rides Valley Metro Light Rail between two and three times a week. Since April, he has been one of the nearly 200 selected riders that are currently testing out an app called pass to go It's an app basically to buy your passes through your phone and have the passes on the phone rather than needing a physical uh, pass. Valley Metro was given a $1 million grant through the Department of Transportation, which allows them to test out the app until April of 2019. For Franchino, the thought behind the app is a great idea. It's much easier for me being disabled uh, to get my own passes that way and instead of having to have someone with me to handle the money and to do everything, I could just buy it right on the phone, right there at the platform if I need to. And it's just, for me, it's a big independence gainer. Susan Tierney with Valley Metro says the app will serve as a great resource by having everything right at your fingertips. The whole idea is to be able to allow riders to download the mobile pass and then also uh, do some trip planning and then connect to other rideshare services so that it's all in one complete app. Currently the app only works on light rail and when riding the city buses. Valley Metro hopes to eventually team up with ride sharing companies as well. Valley Metro says although studies show 80% of people have a smartphone, they will not be removing the ticket kiosk anytime soon. Kevin Fleischman, Cronkite News. Twitter is reviewing its effect on society's mental health. The company hired researchers to study the health of its discourse. Last March, CEO Jack Dorsey suggested to request proposals on how to improve the health of conversations on the social platform. Hundreds of sub submissions were received, but two stood out. One will focus on echo chambers and uncivil discourse, while the other looks at how exposure to diverse perspectives can decrease prejudice. Dorsey claims the study will give the company a rigorous look of metrics to gauge the state of health Twitter has. Each week, most of us put the trash bin out on the curb to be picked up. Our gar garbage then goes to sit in a landfill. Can you imagine a world without waste? I talked trash with two local women who are hoping to inspire others to develop a zero waste lifestyle. Since February, Rose Halberg has been working on living a zero waste life. And it's been pretty hard. I mean, everything these days is packaged, you know? So uh, for me, it's been a lot of, you know, going through my day to day and realizing, you know, what I can do, what I do that is creating trash. Zero waste means eliminating plastic and using reusable products. People, you know, they don't want to buy, uh, they don't want to be the consumer who's buying something that they have to take the plastic off of every time, you know. It's been interesting to kind of decide what I'm going to be creating versus what I'm going to be a consumer for. With the help of the Society for Creative Anachronism, an organization that recreates skills and the ways of life from medieval times, Halberg has been learning how to make things herself, from detergent to clothes. Anelia Janalinova shares the same passion for zero waste. I don't buy anything that comes in plastic. If, if the cheese is in plastic, I'm not buying it. Janalinova says using plastic comes at a cost and has been living zero waste for two years. She even created her own organic produce bags to use herself and now sells them. There's not a single bit of plastic that uh, that's um, that's been biodegraded or that's gone anywhere. It's actually still on this planet, and it's affecting everything: our air, the earth. It's compromising our right for clean water. We're not going to have sea turtles, and you know we're not going to have you know orca whales and stuff like that. And that's horrible if it means that you know we are the ones that are killing them off. Halberg says if you want to start a zero waste life, don't use straws or plastic. Carry your own Tupperware for takeout and bring your own reusable bags to the grocery store. The American Red Cross reports that they have less than five days worth of blood supply on hand. There is now an emergency call for blood donations. Next on Cronkite News, there is a new incentive being used to get more people to roll up their sleeves and donate. And right now it's 107 degrees and mostly sunny outside. We'll have your seven day forecast coming up soon.
Cronkite News weeknights at 5 on Arizona PBS. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. Join us each weekday at 5.30 and 10 as we bring you the top newsmakers who impact the state. We cover the stories in depth that shape and affect our local communities, and we take the time to ensure that all voices are equally heard. For more than 30 years, Arizona Horizon has been your voice and your source for what matters most, right here on Arizona PBS. Firefighters from across the country, including here in Arizona, have joined in an effort to put out multiple wildfires in California. Despite working all weekend, the deadly car fire is only 20% contained, and crews are worried that the weather will set them back. About 100 miles away, the Manito Sino complex fire has burned over 55,000 acres and is only 10% contained. The fires are burning near a residential lake. More than 10,000 people have been ordered to evacuate. The nation is facing an emergency shortage of blood, and the American Red Cross is in urgent need for donors. Blood of all types is needed. The nonprofit organization is hoping to lure donors by offering gift cards between now and August 30th. The Red Cross will email blood and platelet donors a $5 Amazon gift card after their donation. For more details, you can visit redcrossblood.org slash together. It's hot and humid outside, but Amanda, could we see any rain anytime soon? Well, it looks like we've got a 20% chance of rain right now. Go ahead and follow me over here to our valley forecast right now. Again, it's around 106 in Scottsdale, 107 in Phoenix, but we're taking a look at the weather here when we get the rain coming forward. Now it's coming this way through the valley. And so again, a 20% chance we'll see what happens, but let's take a look at our potential highs. It's still going to get hot. It could potentially get to 100 108 degrees here in Phoenix. Looks like up here in the Grand Canyon at 90, they're a little cooler up above, but then you go more south and it's you've got your triple digits. But let's take a look at our evening forecast coming up. We have 6 p.m. 102 degrees, 9 p.m. partly cloudy. It doesn't cool off enough, only 92 degrees as it gets later throughout the day. Now our seven day forecast, this is what's important coming up. We have 109 degrees on Wednesday that looks like our highest throughout as you can see that there's not really a lot of shade that you're going to be getting here in the valley which causes an issue um, especially for those who are involved um, with any respiratory diseases or any issues outside so don't forget to tune in and that's it for the weather center when it comes to picking a high school sport to play most teams do it for the love of the game but their passion comes at a cost. Next, we take a look at the high price tag for taking up tennis. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. This is my last broadcast as the anchor man of the CBS Evening News. And that's the way it is. Carrying on the baton of those who came before us, our superb team of journalists, writers, reporters, editors, producers, work each and every week to tell the stories critical to you. For Arizona news that matters, tune into Cronkite News weeknights at 5 on Arizona PBS. If you're looking for one show that tells you what happened that day in the world of business, 
markets and beyond. We saw a classic chip wreck. Nordstrom's opening stores. Triple digit gains. Crude climbs. We're there to help our audience find new investment ideas. The market still has room to go up. Nightly Business Report is the longest running business television program in history. Weeknights at 1030 on Arizona PBS. Many high school athletes strive to play tennis at the highest competitive level, but does it take more than skill and hard work to excel? Cronkite News reporter Stephanie Shields explored some of the reasons behind tennis player success around the Valley. Countless hours of tennis lessons can add up for high school athletes looking to get extra training. For many who dream of a college scholarship or even a chance to go pro, it takes more than playing on their high school tennis teams. Former Arcadia High School tennis star Jillian Rasmussen is one of the best in the state. In 2017, Rasmussen led Arcadia to the 5A team championship and won the title in doubles. But Rasmussen says her success is due to the nonstop training she's done outside of school. High school is really fun and it's like a good learning experience, but it's not nearly as competitive as practice here at tournaments with the USTA. Rasmussen trained at a Scottsdale facility for 11 years, and those lessons can be pricey. Data compiled by Cronkite News suggests that high school teams in Arizona who routinely finish in the top four of the state tournament come from schools that have lower percentages of students on free or reduced lunch programs. This data suggests that tennis programs thrive in more affluent communities. If you're taking actively taking privates and coming six days a week, it can cost 800 to a thousand dollars a month so it's tennis isn't cheap. DC Ranch Village Center here in Scottsdale is one of the many different facilities where high school students can train for tennis but in other areas of Arizona like Nogales facilities like this are uncommon. You know there's not a ton of tennis courts there's not a ton of tennis coaches so it, it's a it's a rather small community. There are 41 public high schools in Arizona with boys tennis programs. Of the seven schools that had top four finishes in team, singles, and doubles more than five times in the last five state tournaments, six of them have less than 20% of their students on free or reduced lunch programs in 2017. Private schools that charge tuition are also very successful. Brophy Prep had 12 top four finishes in the last five years. Our top eight to nine guys do their own training with either lessons or clinics that they go to. Um, and farther back in the ladder, like there are guys who still go to practice or go to clinics, but you know, maybe go twice a week. Like these guys are regularly going, they're practicing five, six times a week. However, some schools like Nogales High, which has nearly 70% of its students on free or reduced lunch, are able to be successful. The Apache's boys team has two top four finishes in the last five state tournaments. A lot of the ones that are more serious will actually drive up to Tucson and take their take their lessons up in Tucson, uh, where there's you know obviously a significant amount of tennis and, and coaches and private clubs. Regardless of whether an athlete gets pricey lessons or not, both Cutler and Chalmers believe high school play provides an opportunity to learn team dynamics and unity, plus gives them a chance to play in college. Jillian Rasmussen, who trained privately for over 10 years, will be playing Division I tennis at Seattle University this fall. In the Broadcast Center, Stephanie Shields, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, a new study on racial disparity in police shootings. And not all are pleased with the state's attempts to take over parts of the federal Clean Water Act. I'm Judy Woodruff. On the next news hour, our Now Read This Book Club has an interview with Pachinko author Min Jin Lee. And we reveal our pick for August. That's Monday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Each week, enjoy the challenges, 
triumphs, and adventure in the world of nature. <laughs> Discover the strange platypus, endangered humpback whales, how elephants survive in the desert, wild reindeer, and more on Wild. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona 